Hello, everyone. This week, we will talk about big data and the AI for clean energy. This is a emerging topic, and it's evolving fast, both because big data and AI are evolving fast, and also because of the applications in the clean energy and the confronting climate change using big data and AI evolving very fast. So I hope uh, I'll give you a, a tip of the iceberg of how this field is evolving. So if you are interested, um, you can <clears throat> pay attention to read more from the recommended papers and try to use those paper as a thread so you can follow with uh, some of the cited papers and uh, track the progress of the field. At zero, we will talk about sample uh, analytic questions. Uh, I hope through this lecture, you will get a sense of what are the new advancements in AI and big data and why it's important and how AI and big data could be used in uh, facilitating clean energy transition and address uh, climate change. Uh, we will use some uh, typical or representative examples. Uh, by no means they are, are the best examples, but uh, those are some examples that I can, uh, I hope it, they will offer some inspiration for you to what's going on in the field. Um, that's what I mentioned is some good examples or successful stories in using AI to address climate change or using AI to uh, do uh, clean energy or enhance energy efficiency, uh, those topics that we have covered in previous lectures. And uh, I hope uh, this will also help uh, to push you a little bit to uh, think about what skill sets are needed to work in this field. Um, not just a, a master of a, uh, data science skills, but also with deep understanding of the, how the energy system work and what are the topics in uh, the climate um, mitigation or adaptation. So um, I'd like to start with, uh, uh, local example. Uh, as you know, Long Island has been a frontier for offshore wind development. Uh, US has a goal to have uh, 30 gigawatt scale of offshore wind by 2035. And um, New York State and uh, Long Island are the frontier of that goal. Um, and uh, US um, nearby, we already had uh, one of the it's actually the first offshore wind project in the United States, the Block Island offshore wind and a local uh, startup company. Um, maybe uh, if you're not familiar with it, I, uh, you may check out uh, the video I want to play here to save to save time. It's called UCL uh, ULC uh, Robotics, and then it. Uh, it become uh, ULC technologies. Uh, so basic idea is uh, they fly jumps and take all uh, uh, 360 degree uh, around uh, pictures of uh, any wind turbine. Traditionally, uh, wind turbine, offshore wind turbine uh, maintenance has to uh, done by experts uh, who uh, take the boat, take the tow to uh, the station to the wind turbine and climb this uh, more than 100 meters uh, turbine and to check each bit of the turbine at the junctions. And it's quite uh, labor intensive and sometimes it's not safe. And using jumps, take those pictures, and then they use uh, AI algorithms to analyze the pictures to check uh, where potentially the problems 
uh, and uh, take uh, preventive actions to address uh, the maintenance. Uh, it's a, a, a great example is at the local in Hapa, I think, the, the company. And it shows how uh, big data, which is you using the drones to take the all around pictures of the wind turbine and then using AI algorithms uh, to detect um, where potential risks, risks are. And so we can uh, do some preventive uh, maintenance so uh, we can keep the uh, offshore wind uh, farm uh, operating. Uh, this is a fascinating example. Uh, so you, uh, when you uh, watch the uh, um, uh, slides, you can uh, take time to, to show how, how it works. Um, and that uh, rely on the advancement in the uh, AI technologies. Uh, one of the prior uh, uh, was named Andrew Nye. And um, uh, he has a famous quote, right? The AI is the new electricity. Uh, we talked about electricity is so fundamental for our energy systems and uh, social economy development. And uh, it has been driving the economy for uh, hundreds of years. And uh, now uh, we are entering a new um, era that AI can serve as the new electricity. Uh, uh, here is a quote from Andrew that just as electricity transformed almost everything 100 years ago, today uh, we actually had a, a hard time thinking of an industry that I don't think AI will transform in the next several years. That means AI can transform uh, everything, every industry, uh, how we live, how we uh, communicate, how we learn, and uh, how our society operate. Um, uh, this, um, I cannot emphasize uh, how important this is, and you may not even notice how uh, your daily life has been shaped or changed uh, by AI. They use uh, AI recommended, uh, you read AI recommended news, uh, uh, maybe Facebook or Twitter uh, posts, um, and uh, you buy stuff recommended by AI and uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, you, when you check Gmail, uh, AI filter and blocks spam emails, um, uh, those are just uh, uh, some examples. You sometimes we make decisions even um, without noticing uh, how those decisions has been impacted by those AI algorithms. We will discuss um, uh, the risks uh, or uh, the ethics behind those uh, AI algorithms uh, uh, in, at the later of this lecture, later part of this lecture. So. Just give a few uh, perspectives on the milestones in AI and the very um, left side is a, a pic famous picture called pair blue dot. Uh, it was taken by um, the spaceship Voyage. Uh, it's uh, fly out of the um, solar system and we should take a, a picture of the Earth. I can hardly uh, see it, uh, there's a pale blue dot, which is here, and that's the Earth uh, we live in. Um, and it's a beautiful picture. Uh, it's really help us to reflect and understand who we are uh, as human beings, how small we are uh, as compared to the large universe. And it also help us to think about what's really important um, to our uh, purpose of uh, life, uh, the meaning of being, uh, and also uh, how beautiful it is uh, as we live in the earth, that uh, it's the only place that has uh, living things, right? Um, 
So AI has transformed, but at the same time, you can see the universe created about three, uh, 13.8 billion years ago, about 4.6 or 4.5 billion years ago. Modern humans only 300,000 years ago and the civilization is just about 12,000 years ago. And the reading record is like 5,000. And AI in this perspective is, has been accelerating um, the civilization. Uh, on the right side, it shows some uh, milestones of uh, the development of AI, starting from neural networks to uh, CAN, I uh, probably heard about um, IAA, and more recently, yeah, more uh, familiar with AlphaGo, which um, uh, the AI beat the world champion of a Go game, right? And then more recently, Alpha Photo 1 and Alpha Photo 2, that um, AI uh, revealed the structure of the pro all kinds of protein that's important for uh, us to understand even design of a new uh, life so you know uh, cells um, very important very exciting uh, advancement uh, in this field uh, and probably you hear different terms about uh, artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning uh, a simplified relationship between those is uh, deep learning is a subset of a machine learning and machine learning is a subset of a, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, deep learning, if you hear about um, neural networks, uh, that's uh, the algorithms really rely, uh, help make deep learning uh, possible. Uh, I'll introduce uh, uh, the algorithms uh, a little bit more. So for neural networks, um, that's very often uh, the deep learning rely on. And uh, that's uh, neural networks, CAOIA, and really um, help make uh, the advancement in AI. And that's through the deep learning. Machine learning incorporate deep learning part is more abroad um, with algorithms of a supervised learning, unsupervised learning, or uh, reinforcement learning, or in, uh, evolutionary learning. Uh, uh, very often uh, supervised learning, which means that uh, you help uh, classify or, or, or tag uh, the pictures or the, the nerds or words. So uh, it, it enhances uh, the learning process of uh, the AI and unsupervised learning is more automatic and through clustering and or a distance um, algorithms. So uh, the algorithms will do the job by itself. Um, and uh, AI is more broad, uh, which uh, for any, um, algorithms that uh, using more uh, artificial, as say, you known from human using um, other expert systems, even further systems, so uh, incorporating machine learning and deep learning, uh, and it's more broad and the, the, the larger uh, landscape of uh, uh, AI uh, that's artificial intelligence. Uh, you may hold about some of the algorithms and you may be uh, interested in knowing more of the algorithms, but um, very important is the neural networks that uh, mimic uh, how our brain uh, function. And that's the secret um, of uh, the advancement of uh, uh, deep learning and AI. So, AI um, has transformed all aspects of our society. I uh, mentioned it's integrated uh, and how we communicate, how we um, uh, learn, how we 
uh, purchase since how we live. Uh, it's uh, just uh, uh, incredible. Uh, so it, uh, here you can see uh, how we live, how we purchase things, uh, how we build structures, how we uh, drive because the uh, autonomous uh, vehicles and um, robotics, as you can see here, markets, and also uh, penetrated to uh, uh, the energy systems. Um, uh, we will use examples uh, later how, how AI has uh, reshaped uh, our energy systems. Sure. So why uh, AI has become uh, so important or so powerful, there are some key uh, enabling factors. First is uh, the technological maturity. Um, the uh, advancement in the AI algorithms uh, really uh, enhance the outcome of those algorithms, uh, especially uh, the, the neural networks um, for pictures, for voice recognitions, for tra uh, translation, for, for different tasks. Uh, it just becomes uh, amazing um, uh, in uh, performance. Uh, one example is, is the uh, voice recognition uh, that you can talk with Siri, you can talk with your uh, Google speaker uh, with very high accuracy. And um, if you with the doctor, you may notice that they're no longer typing their loads. Uh, they just talk to the computer and uh, the uh, voice recognition, the accuracy is just uh, uh, incredible. Um, and uh, it enhance uh, the productivity and really help uh, address many of the, um, uh, 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 how, how we uh, really uh, uh, produce and how we really live. And also because uh, the availability and the quality of uh, data uh, storage uh, it's becoming increasingly cheap and uh, all the devices are uh, billions of devices um, cell phones um, vehicles uh, smart uh, appliances uh, no need to sensors um, uh, each of these devices contribute to the collection of data and the storage of data and the organization, the structure of the data, <coughs> and the power to analyze those data, um, and the growing importance of uh, cybersecurity because uh, data involve uh, privacy and the ownership of the data uh, and how we communicate and share the data becomes a, a huge a challenge and cybersecurity uh, in this background is increasingly important. Um, and uh, big data and science, uh, uh, data science and uh, uh, AI are really an important field for training and uh, reskilling of uh, uh, energy sector professionals, no matter which sector you uh, will work at. Uh, you will feel that importance of uh, data li literacy um, with the uh, ability and the skills to uh, manage, to uh, analyze, and to interpret and uh, of uh, uh, big data sets and using AI tools to uh, facilitate uh, this process. So those advancements, uh, so first is the AI, becomes more powerful. Second, the data becomes cheaper and there are more people working on it. So those are the enabling factors that helps AI and big data playing an increasingly large role uh, on uh, industry and on our uh, daily life. Uh, here in uh, on the right side, uh, there's an uh, uh, example of uh, 
um, AI and the power sector. Uh, in uh, you can uh, start from the left side, uh, enabling technologies uh, from utility scale batteries behind the meter batteries to electric vehicles, much charging, renewable uh, power to hydrogen, power to heat, and Internet of Things, AI and big data, blockchain, a renewable mini grid, uh, super grid, flexibility in the power plants. Um, so all those technology contribute to the increasingly complete, uh, complex or complicated uh, power systems. All the devices, all the power plants, all the uh, smart um, controls, they contribute to the, this, the evolution of the power grid, right? So that needs a, a better market design and system operation and even new business models. Um, uh, for example, peer-to-peer -peer electricity trading. Now, uh, households work with uh, utility companies, right? It's more centralized. Uh, every household work with uh, utility companies and the utility companies sell electricity to household. In the future, it is totally possible that you can sell electricity to a stranger that pass your house and want to charge uh, their electric vehicle. So they can pay you. you your household has a solar panel and you have extra electricity and you can sell the electricity to charge their EV or even their phone, for example. Uh, and that's peer-to-peer -peer, uh, electricity trading. And you may don't even need to go through uh, the utility companies. Or well, community ownership, uh, that's uh, some microgrid or mini grid, um, and a few uh, collected household, uh, they share um, the uh, in intercollection and uh, that increase the resilience of uh, the household. Let's say uh, when hurricane strike, uh, the central grid lost electricity, but uh, this mini grid or micro grid can still operate. Um, and that really enhanced the resilience of uh, the power systems. Uh, uh, there are, uh, you can envision very different um, uh, systems that from today's uh, grid uh, business model. Uh, that future is exciting because uh, it will create new players, uh, new business models, uh, new uh, designs of the market, uh, how you, uh, uh, the, the payment system, for example, how the, the information exchange systems, the, uh, how the market really work, how, how the price, um, mechanisms uh, uh this, this is just to think about it, it's quite uh, exciting uh how what are the new possibilities uh, um so uh, this is a great area for uh development uh, uh it's fast evolving and uh new phenomena uh, come uh, every day now uh we can use a few examples to uh, discuss uh, the applications of uh, uh, big data and AI and some um, very interesting research uh, in this domain and uh, hope it will offer some inspiration for you to read more and think more, uh, maybe uh, get your hands dirty in uh, this field. Uh, this first one, uh, I may mention this example is uh, Deep Solo, uh, which uh, is a project development by uh, researchers uh, in Stanford University. 
they use that night data that training the algorithm to recognize which roof, I mean, the first uh, train uh, the AI algorithms to uh, recognize uh, rooftop with solar panel in the sunlight data. So they can catch, capture uh, how big is this system and uh, where they are and uh, what are the characteristics of the household. So it links to social economic uh, status and it can create an inventory or statistics of the solar panel. Uh, and very often it's more accurate than the official statistics because it basically can recognize all the solar panel, rooftop solar panel. Uh, it's uh, with big data. Uh, uh, we say a uh, satellite image, uh, you, you, you probably uh, try Google Earth or uh, Google Maps uh, or even Google Street View very often. Uh, those are uh, real, uh, real world <laughs> uh, big data and uh, it becomes available and you make use of those data can do uh, amazing things. And th this is just one example. So first advantage of this is provided bottom-up uh, statistics and uh, uh, more accurate data. And it can link to, uh, because this accuracy is not just in uh, spatial and the temporal because compare different um, uh, uh, time frame, different years, for example, you know which panel is installed in which year. Um, and that provide time series uh, changes. So link that, uh, as you can see in the right side, uh, solar systems and um, the southern household and the population density and uh, average household income, average years of education and the GD index. Uh, you can see that um, it has a, um, uh, let's say, population density reach up about a uh, thousand. That's the peak uh, uh, installation. And, and also uh, household income, uh, it's a relationship uh, once past 150K. More um, household, more household income doesn't need to more installation, and um, in general, uh, more educated people has um, more incentive to install solar panel, and uh, so this will help um, the decision makers uh, to see oh uh, the population density, for example, uh, where is um, the population population density has the largest uh, solar installation. That can give uh, some good indicator of where um, the uh, policies should be uh, focused on. Uh, very interesting. And so also how different income has uh, in, impact on the installation. Uh, so, uh, very often it's the higher uh, income people benefit from the solar rooftop installation and they receive subsidies, right? We discussed this in previous, uh, the, the justice uh, lecture. Um, this again uh, shows that. So using uh, the AI and the big data really because uh, it's trained the algorithm to recognize the solar uh, rooftop solar, right? Uh, and uh, this offer a very good example of how um, these methods can contribute to uh, public policy 
uh, discussions. Um, one of the example is uh, a deep mind uh, AI to improve wind performance. Um, so we know integrating renewables, uh, variable renewable resources has been a challenge because wind come and go. Sometimes uh, you have big wind, sometimes uh, there's no wind. And in order to integrate uh, those renewables to provide um, stable service, uh, there are huge challenges, right? Uh, there are ways or solutions to those challenges. For example, if we can have better predictions of wind power production, so we can uh, prepare the systems for um, the variability or uh, we have better prediction of the electricity supply and demand. So we can match supply and demand better. Um, or you, <coughs> we can use AI algorithms to reduce the maintenance cost. Uh, ULC uh, technology uh, using uh, the drones to fly as, a, as an example, right? So uh, each of these solutions, uh, AI can play a role. For example, uh, weather forecast has increasingly becomes more accurate. And that contribute uh, to better predictions of uh, wind speed. So we can prepare the system. And if we know tomorrow it will be mostly uh, a quiet day, then we know we need uh, uh, using other sources to uh, provide the electricity. So that we are, um, or if we know tomorrow we have large uh, wind uh, speeds and then uh, we know uh, how, to pre how to plan for it, right? Mm. So better predictions of the wind production, better predictions of demand. And so we have better uh, uh, strategy to match the supply and the demand. All this contribute uh, to improve, to increase the value of wind power and reduce the operation cost. And um, it improve the wind performance of the uh, wind farm. Uh, uh, that's a, a great example. Another example also by uh, DeepMind uh, team is uh, they introduced the AI or machine learning controlled uh, data center. Uh, we know data center uh, consumes uh, huge energy. Uh, globally, I imagine data center consumes about 1% of uh, the global um, electricity consumption. 1% uh, might not seem impressive number, but if given the scale of the global electricity consumption, it's, it's a huge number. Um, and uh, the, you, the energy consumption is not just um, to uh, keep the uh, computers on, uh, the data uh, center, uh, computers running, but also um, they are huge because uh, those computers uh, need to run on a optimized uh, temperature, right? If it becomes too hot, it will reduce the performance and may even create uh, fire. So a large energy is spent on cooling the data sent. <laughs> but that cooling um, will impact by, for example, uh, external uh, ambient temperature and um, how the computers run in and uh, other factors, right? So using AI algorithms, we integrate those factors to have better control when you need it. Uh, run your fans, cooling fans, for example. So that only introduce, introduce the accuracy and it significantly reduce uh, the unit uh, energy consumption of the uh, data centers. 
example. This is uh, using Google, for example, uh, as uh, the uh, machine learning control on, it reduce um, the uh, energy consumption in the uh, data center. And uh, when the machine learning control off, it's back to uh, what it was not the normal. Because otherwise you have to uh, you set up a, a routine schedule for uh, running or even running the cooling for 24 hours, right? So uh, this is another uh, great example uh, of uh, uh, AI that save data center cooling energy use. Um, some other examples, uh, this is another paper uh, using uh, SATNA data and AI algorithms to build the global inventory of solar PV. Uh, because solar PV, once installed, it changed um, the nanny use and the nanny cover. So using the Google SATNA data um, or other SATNA data, uh, you can train the algorithms to recognize the solar panel and depict uh, the scale of the, uh, the, uh, of the solar PV farms or stations and uh, try to have a complete inventory. Uh, it's easier to verify and then to use uh, uh, not distorted data and provide better support of uh, uh, and it can create a uh, time series too, as uh, in the deep solo uh, project. And this operate at the global scale, it really provide a, a fine uh, data set uh, for research, for public policy, and uh, and it can be updated. Uh, it's, it's a cool example of how to use this data and methods to create a uh, a useful uh, data sets. Hmm. Um, a very recent paper on um, machine learning for electricity access. Uh, we discussed how important electricity access to uh, the economic development and uh, basic service uh, in the developing world, especially in um, uh, African countries. And this one use uh, African as example to show how uh, the AI algorithms can detect uh, the infrastructure of uh, uh, the grid, the roads, for example, and also use uh, those data uh, to uh, evaluate the wealth index. Uh, that means uh, in those areas, very often uh, the basic statistic of economic development is often uh, not existing. So using those data can calculate, for example, household, how big the household, uh, what is distance to the nearby infrastructure and uh, how those can be incorporated in the wealth index and how it will link to the electricity access. And so it can provide evaluation of um, the, the value of uh, electricity access. Uh, that's uh, uh, another layer. Of, so you would have a, a powerful tool uh, to support the decisions on uh, expanding the infra, infra, infrastructure and evaluate the impact of uh, uh, the basic electricity access. Uh, so this is a, a, a good example of uh, using the methods uh, and the powerful tool uh, to help us to uh, make um, important uh, international development uh, decisions. So AI can really uh, helpful or powerful in provide uh, climate solutions uh, to, uh, this is a, a, 
a cool reviewing uh, review paper. Uh, we know to address climate change, we need uh, mitigation, adaptation, and uh, actions. Uh, this can be at the individual level and the collect collective level. In the mitigation, uh, the carbon emitting industries include electricity, transport, uh, building, industry, uh, agriculture, and carbon remove technology. And so AI algorithms can be used in the causal inter, uh, inference, uh, computer vision, uh, uh, natural language processing, um, times, time series, um, and other algorithms or applications. And each of them uh, can have a different uh, usage or contribute to the mitigation or adaptation and action uh, study. Uh, uh, this is a great resource for us to uh, think about how AI can contribute uh, to climate solution and it uh, cites hundreds of papers um, and it provides a, a comprehensive review. And if you are interested, I highly recommend it to um, take a look and especially for specific uh, solutions, you can read uh, the literature cited in this paper and it provide a good um, uh, how to say tree of the literature, right? That you can track the development uh, in this field and uh, offer inspirations. Uh, what you are uh, interested uh, questions or solutions, and I use that as a, a thread, so you can track uh, the progress and think more about how it's linked to your interest in your research and they might create new stuff uh, in this tree. Um, it's, it's, it's very cool. Uh, another uh, uh, reviewing paper focused more on the greenhouse gas mitigation. Uh, now, uh, this mitigation adaptation action, right? This one focus more on the mitigation and um, the uh, AI advancement really can contribute to uh, increase um, our understanding and uh, uh, to especially to have more accurate or precise greenhouse gas emission estimation and uh, to understand uh, the effect of a greenhouse gas emission. And in all different fields, um, power systems, uh, energy supply, buildings, industry, transport, agriculture, forests, um, to have better understanding of the rebound effect. Uh, we discussed that. So those industries with the penetration and integration of uh, big data and AI algorithms or AI tools for analysis, it will help um, the workers or the policy makers in those sectors to make better decisions. Um, and increasingly, uh, AI has been made easier to adapt, adapt um, uh, and data becomes more transparent. And so it creates opportunities uh, in this domain. Um, uh, lastly, uh, I hope spend a few minutes to talk about, uh, we know AI is so important, so powerful, and uh, sometimes we don't understand uh, the non-turn and the uh, uh, important effects, implications of uh, the technology advanced. Um, especially uh, the potential impacts or concerns of uh, AI. And that's why uh, we are discussing AI ethics uh, because it can create, create and enhance uh, 
uh, enhance the biases. Um, it may uh, impact the privacy. Uh, data is not just uh, data, it involves, it reveals our um, characteristics, our interests, our uh, profile, and that becomes uh, very important uh, because uh, we want to protect our privacy and AI can even make mistakes and who should be responsible for that mistakes. Uh, AI run on data centers, it has environmental impacts, it em emits carbon uh, greenhouse gas emissions, and it may have other unwell impacts, our psychology, let's say uh, our mindsets enhanced uh, by the information or misinformation we receive on a daily basis that recommended by AI algorithms. And it can even impact the election results, our, our choices of the candidates, for example. Uh, especially that created so-called information trap uh, and enhanced by the, uh, the trap. Um, there are so many uh, examples uh, over the past years. So uh, AI ethics uh, really becomes an issue uh, and it attract uh, some of the great minds to really think about what should we do. Um, UNESCO, uh, made some efforts to try to uh, create a common principles on the discussion. Um, uh, for example, each of this may seem abstract, but in order to <laughs> enhance or integrate our uh, design of AI systems, then it becomes quite uh, important and challenging. For example, do no harm, safety and security, fairness and no discrimination, uh, sustainability, we discussed that, right to privacy and the data protection, uh, human oversight and the determination. Uh, we cannot um, let AI algorithms to decide what human should be, but uh, who should decide uh, or ethic council, or who should be in the ethic council uh, there are a whole lot of, uh, and how to make the rule transparent, how, how we should make decision, important decision. Um, uh, those are, are very real questions. Um, responsibility and accountability, uh, awareness and literacy, uh, AI ethics need to be included in the awareness and multiple stakeholders and adaptive governance and collaboration through international collaborations to from uh, stakeholders from different uh, levels. All this will uh, help us to uh, in the uh, discussion of building consensus and take actions in um, enhance the AI ethics to reduce the unintended consequences of uh, uh, those AI algorithms. Wow. Uh, that's a big question. Uh, there's uh, no immediate answer to it, but we acknowledge and we know we are still slow in uh, responding to the fast evolving uh, AI uh, field, AI algorithms. Uh, we for sure need better education and research to address um, the challenge, uh, even though uh, this move is nearly very slow. And uh, we need an assessment and communicate this impact and uh, governance and cooperation uh, to to develop uh, to de design the solution. Um, value aligned design is a uh, new thinking that when, especially we are in the school uh, college of engineering, right? Applied, applied science and, and engineering. Um, uh, it's more important for us to uh, really have the sense of uh, AI uh, ethics um, because 
uh, engineering is too important to be left to the engineers and the engineers need to have uh, literacy on AI ethics or ethics of uh, uh, products. So um, we are not just making um, products or in, uh, to design engineering systems. We have to understand the impact of those engineering uh, systems and the products. And uh, that's why uh, we need to uh, think about uh, this and have it integrated in our education system uh, to really uh, align the design of engineering systems with our value of inclusive um, uh, transparency, fairness, and to do no harm as we discussed uh, before. Uh, it's not easy, but uh, as long as we have such awareness and then we try to think about it and align our um, principles with our products, we have better chance uh, to succeed in addressing those challenges. So to summarize, um, AI and the big data has transformed how we live, how uh, we communicate, how we learn uh, in the end, uh, how can we save the planet. Um, and AI um, does not automatically add new insights that uh, that we are re still rely on your experts, but it provide powerful tool to analyze uh, increasingly available big data. Uh, uh, this is very important because uh, it's not necessarily uh, add new insights. It still rely on the expert, but it provides a tool, tool to, to deal with big data uh, because conventionally the data it's there and we, we don't know how to analyze it. Now you have a better tool. Uh, learning those new tools and skills uh, really becomes necessary to work in the field. Um, so uh, try to uh, get yourself familiar with uh, the data uh, skill sets, the AI algorithms and integrate those methods in your research. Um, so the potential of using AI and the big data uh, to analyze our uh, understanding of the supply, demand, and uh, human behavior is enormous. Uh, and with those um, integration or um, potential, we, we have better chance to address the challenge presented by uh, clean energy and to address climate change. Uh, that's exactly um, how uh, those advancements can contribute. Um, I hope those offer you some uh, inspiration in uh, the development, the new advancement in the field. Uh, and I definitely encourage you to read more about uh, those papers, those um, examples, and uh, get yourself uh, interested or even uh, do some uh, pilot projects uh, in uh, this topic. Uh, that's all for uh, this week and um, uh, happy Thanksgiving.